Hello Key Stage 2, Mr Yates here and welcome to the first of our online virtual P lessons this half term during lockdown. Our focus is going to be on football and we are starting off with some ball control and dribbling today. So to start off with, you will need a selection of soft equipment. Okay, It could be shorts, Okay, it could be a bib, Okay or it could be a pair of socks, something that you can use as an obstacle. If you've got a set of cones that you can use, that's absolutely fantastic, but if not, just something soft that you can dribble around, that would be great. You will also need uh, a ball. If you've got a football, that's great. If not, you can use um, an appropriate ball um, of a different nature, that's absolutely fine. If not, you can roll up a pair of socks and use that as a ball instead, so that's absolutely fine. To start off with, we're going to look at um, a game of traffic lights. We're going to progress that into some ball control. And we're going to move that onto some dribbling. I'm going to finish with a little game at the end. So, for our traffic lights game, we have got an amber cone, a red cone, and a green bean bag. So for amber, you are going to be jogging on the spot. For red, you are going to show me some form of football stance or starting position. Okay, so it might be that you are about to strike a football. Okay, it might be that you're a goalkeeper and you're about to make a catch. Okay, it could be that you're taking a throw in, or it could be that you're about to roll the ball out as a goalkeeper. It could be that you're about to pass the ball or volley the ball. But on red, any form of football stance or starting position. For amber, you're going to be jogging on spot, getting ready to go, and green, we're going to do some form of movement. Okay? So, to start off with, amber, jogging on spot. Good, well done. And green, jogging around the area. Off you go, moving around in your space. Nice and light to start off with just to get our body working. Good, fantastic. Good, testing your reactions and skipping around. Driving your arms, nice high knee lift. See how high you can skip. Good, well done. Sidestepping off we go. Good, show me those football stances. Good, great work. High knees, off we go. See how high you can get those knees. Good. Carry on with your high knees. Show me those football stances. Good. And heel flicks off we go. Show me those football stances. And again. Karaoke, off we go. Crossing your legs over, uncross.
Jogging on the spot. Good. Football stances. Inside, inside, outside, outside. Inside, inside, outside, outside. Good, jogging on the spot. Fantastic, boys and girls. Right, so we are now going to swap the colours around a little bit. So, red is going to be jogging on the spot. So get ready. Amber is going to be stop. Green is going to be go. As simple as that, okay? So, are we ready? Jogging on the spot. Football stance. Testing your reactions, good, ready. Formal stance. Good. Jogging on the spot. Green, a movement of your choice. Off you go. Jogging on the spot. Formal stance. Ready, running, off we go. Nice little five yard sprint. Lots of change of direction. Formal stance. Fantastic work, Key Stage 2. You are working brilliantly. So, I'm going to introduce two more counts for you. A blue one, you're going to get down low to the floor, okay? And you're going to go flat onto your stomachs like that, okay? Purple, you're going to do a big star jump. Like that, okay? So blue, low to the floor. Purple, nice big star jump. Okay? Still, we're going to swap the colours around. So green is now stop. Amber is now go. And red it's jogging on the spot. Okay. Are we ready? Good. Ready. A movement of your choice. Off you go. That's it, low to the floor. Good. Ready. Star jump. Fantastic. Low to the floor. Star jump. Good. Are we ready? Football pose, show me some form of stance. Ready. Jogging on the spot. Let's go. Okay, and for this one, we are going to go jogging backwards. Off we go. Make sure you have a look over your shoulder so you can see where you're going, working in lots of space. Four more stands. Good. Jogging on the spot. Ready. Start jump. Low to the floor. Star jump. Star jump. Star jump. 
Low to the floor. Low to the floor. Low to the floor. Football stance. Go, any movement. Jogging on the spot. Star jump. Flat to the floor. Star jump. Flat to the floor. Star jump. Jogging on the spot. Football stance. Well done, boys and girls. That completes the warm up for this morning's session. Okay. So boys and girls, I hope you've had a drink and you're ready to go on our dribbling part of the session today. So um, for this, you're going to need a ball and you're going to need a safe space that you can work in. And to start off with, we are just going to use um, different parts of the feet to control the ball. Okay, so we're specifically going to look at the insides, the outsides, Okay, and the sole, okay, the bottom of our foot, okay. So, to start off with, we're just going to do everything on the spot, and then we're going to start to include some movement. So we're going to go from some ball control into some dribbling. We will progress then to introduce a few obstacles, um, so that we're having to change direction and go around things, okay, as if we were going in and out of um, op opposing players. So, um, to start off with, we're just going to do our penguin feet. So we're just going to move the ball from one foot to the other, okay, just using the insides of our feet, okay. And I want you to remember that when we are dribbling, we want to try and take small touches, okay, because small touches allow us to what we call manipulate the ball, okay, to move the ball in lots of different directions, which makes it harder for opposing players to get the ball off us and easier for us to go in and out of tight spaces. Okay, so we're looking to use lots of small touches, okay, rather than big touches. So I'm just moving the ball, just using the inside of the feet, okay, just like that, from one foot to the other. Okay, and I've got my arms out to balance, and I'm now starting to go into a bit of a jog, see if I can do it a little bit quicker. Speed my feet up. See, I've got my head up so I can see where I'm going, but I can also see the ball. Knees ever so slightly bent, because that's going to give me a little bit of spring. Easier for me to change direction. And to stop the ball and to maintain control, we just rest our sole on top of the ball, just like that. And that way now, I can drag the ball in different directions, okay? But it also stops the ball from running away from me. Which is really, really important, because if it runs away from me, that's when an opposing player is going to take the ball off me. So, from penguin feet, we're now going to progress onto what we call toe taps. So toe taps, we're going to use the sole of the foot towards the toes, okay? And all we're going to do is just going to roll the toe on top of the ball just like that, okay? Just from one foot to the other. Again, same stance as before with our penguin feet, knees ever so slightly bent, arms out for balance, head up, and now I'm going to start to speed it up. Again, just on the spot, not going anywhere yet. Good, and rest there. Fantastic work, boys and girls. So from penguin feet, using the insides, to toe taps, using the sole, we're now going to go onto an inside and outside combination. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our inside of our foot around the outside of the ball, okay? So we're gonna go from the inside, okay? Bring the ball across our body, outside. Okay, so it's just inside to outside. Okay, just like that. So bringing our inside of the foot around the ball and our outside of the foot around the ball. Just on your strongest foot to start off with, whichever foot you're most comfortable with. Just like that, just little touches like we say. Keep that ball on that magical piece of string. And now we're gonna stop the ball and we're gonna swap feet, okay? So we're gonna go on to our opposite foot now. Same thing, inside, outside. It's nice little touches. 
If you need to, you can move the ball, stop it, and then bring the ball back across and stop it. If you're finding that a little bit easier, that's absolutely fine. And then we can start to build it up. If you can do it without stopping it, that's good too. Okay. So we're now going to go back to the penguin feet. Okay. And we're going to see how many touches we can get in 30 seconds. Okay. So every time you touch the ball with the inside of your foot, you get one point. If you feel like you're using, losing control, stop the ball, okay, and carry on. Don't let the ball run away from you. Are you ready? So you've got 30 seconds to get as many touches as possible. Think how you're going to do that, okay, think how you can get more touches. Obviously, the bigger the touch, the fewer you're going to take. So you need to make the touch nice and small. Too fast, you're going to lose control of the ball, okay, but we want to do it quickly enough that we're going to get more points. Okay, are we ready? 30 seconds and go. Good, and stop there, okay? So whatever score you've got, you're now going to try and beat it, okay? Think about how you're going to do that. So look at your performance. Did the ball run away from you? Okay, could you possibly speed your feet up? Were you going too fast? Do you actually try and need to try and slow down a little bit because you found yourself breaking your string, the ball running away from you? Was the ball getting trapped between your feet? Okay, so maybe you need the ball a little bit further out in front of you. Okay, think about how you're going to improve your score, and now you've got 30 seconds to try and do that. Fantastic, boys and girls. We're now going to go back to our toe taps, and we're going to see how many toe taps we can do in 30 seconds. Are we ready? Off we go. Bounce going, you're going to get more points, keep going, working so well, three seconds, two, one, and stop. Again, analyse your performance, look at the things that you think you did really well, look at the things that you think you could improve on, and then you've got 30 seconds again to try and beat your score, okay? We're now going to move back onto the inside and outside combination. A little bit of a challenge for you. If you want to go from inside outside, okay, and then swap feet, just like that. Okay, so out and in, out and in, out and in, that's fantastic. If you just want to work on one foot, okay, that's absolutely fine too. So it's entirely up to you. Are we ready? How many inside, outside, outside, inside combinations can you do? One point every time you touch the ball. Ready? 30 seconds, go. Three, two, one, and stop there. Great work, boys and girls. Again, look at your performance, look at the things that you think you did well. If you need to repeat it, repeat it. If you think that you're ready to go on and do another 30 seconds, think at how you can improve your score and see if you can beat it. Fantastic, boys and girls. Right, we're now going to introduce a little bit of skill, okay? So, we're going to see if we can look at manipulating the ball on the move. 
So rather than doing it stationary, I'm going to be moving inside my area, okay? And I'm going to start off with my penguin feet. But now, as you can see, I'm keeping the ball the same distance away from my feet all the time, keeping it nice and close, but just so it's out in front of me. If I need to stop it, I'll stop it, regain control of it and carry on. We've gone from that ball control, we've introduced a new skill, dribbling. Good, and stop there. So from penguin feet into toe taps, again, introducing that movement. If you can go forwards, can you go backwards? You can go backwards, can you go sideways? Can anybody go around the clock? Great work boys and girls, absolutely fantastic. So from penguin feet on the move, toe taps on the move, and now inside, outside, outside, inside on the move. Again, you can work on one foot, you can work on both feet. But lots of changes of direction, lots of inside, outside combinations. Fantastic. Great stuff, boys and girls. You are working so well. So now I'm going to give you 30 seconds to link those different parts of the feet together, introducing that dribbling movement. So you can now link your penguin feet, your insides, with your toe touch, your soles, and your inside outside. Okay, flip flap combinations. Okay, are we ready? 30 seconds. Again, every time you touch the ball, you get a point. Count the points you can get in 30 seconds. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Fantastic work, boys and girls. Again, look at your performance. For example, there I know I lost control. Okay, I misjudged where the ball was, and I didn't make a good contact. The ball was too far away from me. Okay, and I lost control of it. I should have stopped that ball before that happened. Okay, so that's where I would analyse my performance, and that's how I could improve to make sure that in the next 30 seconds, I improve my score. Okay, fantastic work. So have 30 seconds and see if you can set yourself a personal best for driven. Right, now we are going to create some obstacles on the floor. We're just going to make a little bit of a minefield. Like I say, if you haven't got cones, you can use anything that's nice and soft. I'm going to put some uh, socks out as well, some shorts. Couple of bibs just to show you. Okay. If you play football every week and you're really confident with this, you might want to make the equipment nice and close together. Okay. If it's new to you, okay, you can start to spread the equipment out a little bit further. Okay. And then bring it in as you start to gain confidence. And the idea is now that you're going to try and dribble in and out of the obstacles without touching anything. Okay. So we're not going to do it for time to start off with. 
Okay, we're just going to see if we can have a little practice just going in and out using all the different parts of the feet that we've looked at. Okay, without touching any of the obstacles. Okay, so it's entirely up to you. If you use one foot, okay, you might prefer to do that to start off with. Okay, if you're finding that a little bit easy, you might want to go onto your weaker foot. If you're finding that a little bit easy, you might want to go onto both feet. Okay, and try and link both feet together. Okay, just going in and out of the obstacles, just like that. Make sure that if you need to, that ball's running away from you, just stop it, regain control, and then carry on. That will help you to manipulate it, move it in lots of different directions without losing control. Therefore, you've got a better chance of going past those opposing players in tight spaces, which is what dribbling is all about. Right, I'm now going to give you a chance to uh, change your equipment. So you might think, right, I found that a little bit difficult. Equipment was a little bit too close together. Okay, so I'm going to move it further apart. Um, if you found it too easy, right, I might want to start to move it in a little bit. I'm going to move it in a little bit. Okay, to make those spaces a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter, a little bit more congested. Okay, if you've got more obstacles, you might want to throw a few more in as well. Okay, make it more congested. Okay, the busier the area, the harder it's going to be for you to manipulate the ball. Okay, so again, have a little practice. Going in and out, changing direction, keeping the ball in control. Lots of small little touches. Keeping the ball inside your area. Good, and stop there for me. Excellent work, boys and girls. So you've now got 30 seconds to count the number of touches you can do around the obstacles without touching an obstacle. If you touch an obstacle, okay, you take two points off your score. So the idea is that you've got 30 seconds to get as many touches as possible, moving in and out, but if you touch an obstacle, take two points away from your score. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go! Top of my score. And stop there, boys and girls. Fantastic work. So I'm gonna ask you, how can you make it harder for yourself? That's up to you, okay? I'd like to think about how can you challenge yourself further, okay? Maybe you're gonna limit yourself to using only your weaker foot. Maybe you're going to limit yourself to only using specific parts of the foot. Maybe you're going to introduce more obstacles, make it even tighter. Okay. Maybe you're going to try and introduce some form of skill. Okay. Maybe a little step over, or maybe a turn. Okay. Like a cross turn or a drag back. Okay. I want you to have another 30 seconds and see if you can beat your score. Okay. You are working so well, boys and girls. I am so impressed. We are now ready to move on to the game part of our session. Hello boys and girls and welcome to the final part of our online virtual PE lesson today on football dribbling. To start off with, we looked at our traffic light game, we looked at stances that we would use in football, we introduced some reactions and lots of different movements to get ourselves nice and warm and prepared, ready for exercise, making sure that we're nice and switched on and alert. We looked at some ball control using different parts of the feet, Okay, we looked at using the insides with our penguin feet, our soles with our toe taps, and inside-outside combinations as well. We then progressed that into the skill of dribbling by introducing some movement, and then looked to link those different movements together, those different dribbles, okay, using the different parts of the feet. We introduced change of directions, okay, and by introducing obstacles, we made it harder for ourselves because we had to manipulate the ball that little bit, little bit quicker to make sure that we didn't bump into anything, obviously developing our ball control further. We're now going to finish with a game of through the gate. Okay, So what's going to happen? You are going to set out gates with the soft equipment that you have available to you. So I have some cones, I have some shorts, I have some socks, I have some bibs, but you can use anything that's soft at home. 
You need to have a nice space that you can work in. It's up to you how far away the gates are and how wide the gates are. I've made them uh, one yard, one big step between um, the two cones or two objects that make um, the gates. But it's up to you, obviously, the, the tighter it is, the harder it's going to be. You're going to see how quickly you can go through all of your gates. So you need to know how many gates you've got. I've got seven gates here. I'm going to time how long it takes me to go through all seven gates. And then I will try and beat that time. Okay? So, it'd be handy if you've got a stopwatch for this. Okay? If you do hit an obstacle, you need to go back through that gate. Okay? So even if you've already done it, you need to go back through that gate and do it again. Okay, so obviously if you manage to do it without touching any of the obstacles, okay, that's going to help uh, improve your time. Are we ready? So combining all the different parts of the feet, going through the gates, seeing how quickly we can do so, and then we're going to try and beat that score. Okay, go! That's up that one. Now, I got 13.84 seconds, okay? So I would then try and beat that score. Once I've beaten that score, you can see I had to go through this gate twice, okay, which slowed me down. So I'm fairly sure if I was able to go through all of the gates without touching any of the obstacles, I would beat that score. Once I've managed to beat it, I'm then going to think, right, how can I make it harder? Just a few suggestions for you. You could introduce more gates. Still trying to beat the time that you set with the previous number, but there's going to be more gates, so it's going to make it harder. Maybe make the gates slightly smaller. Maybe move the gates closer together. Maybe limit yourself, if you want to, to work on your weaker foot. If you've been doing it with one foot, with your strongest foot, maybe you want to try it with your weaker foot. Okay? If you've been doing it on, what, on your, your weaker foot as well, and you, and you find it nice and comfortable, maybe you want to link both feet together, like I was doing there. Okay, so I want you to think of ways that you can challenge yourself and progress this activity, trying to beat the time that you set, okay, to see how quickly you can go through all of your gates. Key Stage 2, thank you for tuning into this PE lesson, our first online virtual session on football dribbling. Our next session next week will be on passing and receiving. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to hearing and seeing you soon. Take care.